Hey, this is Adam with Sumitomo Drive Technologies, and on today's video, we're going to go over some do's and don'ts for torque arm installation and making sure they're installed properly for a long life of your gearbox. Always remember when working with equipment like this, always want to wear your proper PPE, whether it's safe steel toe boots, safety glasses, gloves, and depending on your location, your electrical lockout, tag out procedures. So first things first, when you're mounting the hardware, you're going to get that you're going to tighten the bolt, but you don't want to go too tight. You want to be able to spin one of the rubber bushings in the entire system. If they're all too tight, it doesn't allow for the reducer to float on the run out of the shaft. This will cause reducer issues. So you definitely don't want to make these this bolt too tight. Next, you want to check for clearances around all the pieces of equipment, both the application side and the reducer side. You want to make sure there's no interference, metal to metal contact of any kind between any of the components. The cyclo section of our reducer with the framing, the torque arm in the framing, usually taking a grinder to the angle iron there will allow for proper clearance so it does not hit. This is another common uh, interference point, just making sure it's not too far in on the shaft that it hits the conveyor or the application. Uh, if there is any interference in any of these locations, you will run into issues with premature failure of the gearbox. Not allowing the reducer to float with the run out of the shaft will cause a misalignment issue of the bearings on the low speed side. And from there, we'll, you'll see seal leaks first, and then you could eventually see bearing failures. So this is a very easy thing to prevent failure and ensure a long-lasting gearbox.